result obviously is disappointing. What about the performance that lay behind it? Well, a tight game. We started really well with the chances, two or three. Uh, second half, they started really well. They increased the rhythm. Had the ball and yeah, not so was tight. And after again, like it was in deflection goal, so they won. Congratulations, Arsenal. What was the key to your good start? You seem to give them real problems playing out and create quite a lot of anxiety actually around the stadium. Well, we we tried, we did it. Uh, this type of games, there are moments uh, we had it in the first half. Uh, we I think for both sides was not. A lot, a lot of chances. Both teams they play good and high pressing. With Raya play their long balls and diagonal balls, it's not easy to control for our fullbacks with Gabriel or or with the other ones. Uh, yeah, it was tight, and at the end, uh, one action we lost the game. So how maybe did the match change after half time? You made a treble change pretty early, so which suggests you weren't entirely happy. All right, ten minutes, yeah, ten two minutes was was like that, and after it was equal. And we had uh, also our moments, and it's not easy because defense is in the back. And but yeah, in general, in general, we we was a tight game. So and at the end, we have the chances we can do it, and unfortunately they did it. What did you make of your play in attacking areas? Just that that final third. I think there's one shot on target today. Yeah, not much. I don't know how much they had in shoots on target. So but they not many either. Huh? Not many either. Yeah, that, that, that's the point. That's the point. So they have our momentos, they have our momentos, the rest was equal and at the end one action they, they won. So you seem obviously you're disappointed, but you seem fairly relaxed, like you're playing away at the Emirates to a good team. It's a match you can lose. Yeah, of course. We can lose in Wolves as well. So every game we have uh, two two defeats in a row. Now they have a tough schedule ahead of us, but now national team, hopefully they come back feet without injuries and after we refresh our minds and, and keep going. So Premier League is going to be tough. It's not the first time we are in that position behind the leaders. So when yeah, you want to Premier League, maybe it's a little bit better, you know, to be there and uh, and see okay what you have to do to catch them and hey, we will try when we come back. Is it a concern? Two defeats in a row in the league? Is there certain things you're seeing that you're thinking, okay, that's not quite right, that's not us at our best? Well it happened to, since two thousand eighteen. Oh no, you yeah. So when happened to Southampton, that is the news. So that's why we won a lot of Premier League. So it's happened. Unfortunately, it was the last day. But the one thing Premier League is because 2018 didn't didn't happen. So in was was completely different game. Okay, Arsenal I mean, it, so it is difficult. And uh, yeah, so congratulations, Arsenal. That's all I can do. And and we know exactly what you have to do, and we do it. Uh, last question then: Is it too simple to say three games without Rodri? Three defeats. Is it more complicated than that? That, that is the stats, so we cannot deny it. But uh, today we put a lot of players to have more control, to have more passes, to try to to players who had the ability to to do it. But they are aggressive in these areas, and after they drop really well, and uh, yeah, mm, we will come back, and and yeah, we will continue. Of course, if this is not that, we, we will play without him, and we will move forward. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thanks. Where, of course, he was the assistant to Pep Guardiola. Did you think, Cesc, at one stage we weren't going to get a goal and they were just going to cancel each other out? Yes, I did. I think uh, the game lacked a little bit of quality in the final third. Obviously, missing uh, players like Saka, De Bruyne, Rodri uh, in this stage, you know, it's, it's, it's big. But, yeah, I think it was, as we mentioned, a 50-50 game overall. I think the fair result would have been a, a draw. But if someone edged it, I think it was Arsenal and Martinelli, as we said, made, made a difference in it. We'll have a look at the goal in a moment. 13 years since a team managed by Pep Guardiola had so few attempts in a game. Was it just that type of game in the end? Um, yeah, I think we have to give a lot of respect to both sets of defenders, to be honest with you. I thought they defended well, especially in transition when either team did break away. They managed to get back in the positions well or snuff it out. Or like Seth said, that in the final third, players just didn't pick the right options, which we saw on both sides. But in general, I thought both teams defended really, really well. I thought the main reason it was uh, a low-scoring game or looked like it was going to be a nil-nil was that both managers set up with plenty of respect for each other. I was going to say put a negative team out. They didn't put a negative team out personnel-wise, but straight away, Sask said to us within 10 seconds, three centre midfielders for, for Manchester City. Normally, they'll play a Rodri and then two number 10s. 
play really high, wide players and one centre forward. Straight away, they had almost a bank of three sat there. And then they had their wide players tucked in and they were using their wit football, uh, full-backs for, for wit. So they were respecting each other. They both know that either team could, could you know, dan provide danger to one another. So I think both teams set up you know, cautiously, let's say, filled the midfield, wanted to win that midfield battle and subsequently had a lot of midfield players in there. So I think that's the main reason why it was it was so few chances and when it why it could have ended up being a nil-nil. And is that the sign of the trajectory Arsenal are on for the treble winners to do that in a game like today? Yeah, sometimes you you have to do things like this. Even if it's not what you're looking for on a daily basis, you have to respect your opponents. You have to understand what you want, what is your uh, the positive outcome of the game at the end of the day. And I think for Arsenal, you know, getting nil-nil until the uh, later stages of the game was probably the plan. You know, because you know they have young players, they have fresh legs, they have a good bench coming on, and as uh, it's been proven. It made a big difference today, but yeah, I think it was a set-up plan, you know, for for a draw. Uh, both teams respecting each other a little bit too much, but I do believe still that those big, big players made a big difference in in, in not having this this quality in the final third. Mm. And in these big games, the fine margins, you need a stroke of luck, and Martinelli and Arsenal. Got that. Correct. The little, the little details at the end of quality. I know the goal wasn't top, top quality because it's a little bit lack. But yeah, this ball is top quality. Tomiyasu making a run in midfield, laying it off. And, uh, you know, like Sean said, you need to try and you need to shoot. Odegaard didn't have his best game today, but he tried a few times. And you never know. You know, if you don't shoot, you will never score. That's 100% sure. So you have to try your luck sometimes. And it went in for Germany. I just wonder whether Ake there. I mean, they always say that defenders should never cross. He's the left centre half, and he was almost. I know it's easy to say in hindsight, but he mm. he's in a position there, and he starts coming across and across, and actually goes past his man, his centre half partner. And I just wonder whether he should come that far across. Again, it's hindsight because it hit, you know deflects and it goes in, so you're always going to look at that. But I think the goalkeeper might have saved it if it hadn't have uh, deflected. And I just wonder whether he should have kept creeping over and over and over and almost blocking the view of a goalkeeper as well. What do you think? Might be harsh, but not happy about it. But <laughs> <laughs> happy about what, Michael? The result. <laughs> oh, Michael, yeah, about Michael giving like picking that little thing. But <laughs> no, I understand what you're saying. You never want your centre backs across, not not like that. But either way, if you're gonna shoot, you, you, you you're, sometimes you hope for a ricochet as a player when you're in those little tight areas to get a shot out through bodies. Of course, you want it to go clean through, but a ricochet keeper normally has no chance. And I think for me here, Tomiyasu makes this goal happen even more because he drags Walker in and once Walker's inside, that leaves that space for Martinelli and it's impossible for him to get to. And then, yeah, you can't do anything. It's that little bit of luck that you make when you play football and it only, you only make it if you try things. And that desire from Arsenal again, late on, to, to not settle for the nil-nil, to, to keep going. I think it's the, the ambition and the mentality that this team is showing lately, you know, and the belief that we first said before the game started that the Emirates now is booming again. They believe that something can happen at any time, at any point against any team. And that's really important for the vibes within the stadium, for the players, for the staff. The momentum is there and they need to take advantage of it. Now, um, 39 seconds before Arsenal scored that goal, there was a challenge. Um, we saw Pep Guardiola up. He was still going up as we were showing. He should have had a free kick. Uh, Gabriel on Haaland, you, you mentioned it at the time. Yeah, for me, I, I do think that's a foul. You're not allowed to jump over people What's like that. Pep at the bottom of your screen. Yeah, I, I get it. Like, I get the frustration, but I still feel like from then, there's, there's still a long way to go before this goal happens. I think the players... This is after the goal. Need to Still going on. You about. can't pull it back, though, can you, Steve, once it's, it's done? So, he's going to be upset and frustrated about it, but... It's football. There was some fouls that both sides of the teams got away with within that game when there weren't no goals. It's a definite foul. It's a, it is a definite foul. I mean, I've been there in that position. If you're in front, the, the defender stands behind because obviously he's covering the goal. He don't want you to run behind him. But that's your space as a centre forward in front. If he wants to get in front, he's got to come round and, and nip in in front. He can't bundle you over or jump onto your shoulders or, or you know, he, he, he can't do that. He could, as I say, he's, he's more than willing to, to come round a nipper and risk going over the top. He stands behind, almost letting you have the, that little area of space. He then can't bundle you over and, you know, if you're about to chest it or head it, he can't jump on your back like that. That's sort of a, 
you know, that's the, the striker's face that, that, that they've almost allowed. So I think that's a definite foul. OK, we'll get more on that. Arsenal reaction to come. But first of all, here are the post-match thoughts of Pep Guardiola. So no goals between last season's top two in the first half at the Emirates. Much to discuss, though. Uh, from an Arsenal point of view, Sesk, what have you made of it? Well, it was a very 50-50 game. Uh, Man City started strong. I think Arsenal reacted very well after, you know, they, they started pressing a bit higher with a little bit more desire. But yeah, it was a, a very tactical game. A lot of new things coming on from Pep and, and Mikel. So, yeah, very interesting game. And from a City point of view, a few surprises in there, the way they've lined up? Um, yeah, definitely, especially when Bernardo was playing that, that number six role. But I think to go to Arsenal and be nil-nil at half-time, you would, you would say yes to start with, but until Ake misses the, um, the chance, they've had a few chances which could have put them in front, but you've got to be happy with nil-nil at Arsenal. Let's look at those, Michael. Four minutes in. Declan Rice, first of all, off the line, and then the, the opportunity Sean's talking about. Yeah, absolutely. That ball's probably going in, but it's a comfortable clearance from Rice. If Gabriel just gets a touch, it might not be, but this is the big chance of fail. Great first touch. I just think less is more. I don't think you need to be smacking it when you're six, seven yards out. Uh, I think you need to be trying to guide it around or over the goalkeeper. Um, so going with your laces from here. Look, he takes a beautiful touch, kills it, Dad. There is a challenge coming in, but... Uh, I don't know. I might just be me. The way I like to finish is, is not always going for power. I agree. I think it's just a little touch here in front of goal. The goalkeeper is coming at you, the defender as well. You need to rack fast. Maybe because he's not a striker, he felt himself in an uncomfortable position, but definitely he should, he should have gone for the, for the small touch. Yeah, I have to agree there. I think finish could have been a bit more Moesque, like less is more sort you of thing. But, but, um, when, no you're not, when you're not a striker, you react like that. I think I may have done the same thing in that situation, but when I'm looking at it from a different point of view, then, yeah, you, the best option I would say there is to side for it. Or lift right. It. One huge talking point. Everyone around the world is talking about it in that first half. You're all going to get a go. <laughs> uh, so, first of all, a challenge by Kovacic on Odegaard. Should it be yellow or should it be red? Am I going first? Yep. <laughs> right. Uh, it, it should, I think, should be yellow, but I Why? think... Why? Well, it's nasty. It's, it, put it this way, if it's over or under a yellow, it's just over. But I don't think enough to go red. OK. Sask? Um, he's my friend, uh, so <laughs> I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. But I would think it's just a red. Just red. Yes. You think red? Yes. He's a little bit too high. The ball already uh, left uh, Odegaard's uh, feet. I think it's just, yeah. I'm going to say he's very lucky, man. Um, I've been on the end of a few of those receiving ones and they are nasty and he's late and he you... catches him above the ankle. I, I, are you I, thinking straight red for that? A borderline, yeah. I think he's been lucky. Two reds and a yellow. <sighs> I think, uh, yeah, I think it's borderline, but I, I just think, just think yellow. OK. So if you, you're happy with the yellow, six minutes later, are you happy he didn't get a yellow for this tackle on Declan Rice? Well, it's a similar scenario for me, uh, apart from downgrading it. So I think, is it a foul? Yes. Is it, is it a little bit more than a foul? Let probably. me ask you another question. If he hadn't been booked, is he booked for that? Probably, yeah. yeah. But the foot's not planted. There's hardly a touch. I think it's... I, I just don't think it's enough for a yellow. There is a touch on the boot, but it, there's, there's no pain there. There's no... Watch this. The, his foot is still floating in the air. It's not planted, it flicks him. You, you could argue a yellow, but I'm going again. I think it's a bit more than a foul, but not enough for a yellow. So I'm quite comfortable with the referee's decision. I think uh, Kova was a little bit naive in this, um, in this case. It's a little bit the same thing we saw before with the Newcastle game. So close, you know, after your first challenge yeah. where you were already lucky or considered lucky, you cannot go down again doing the same, the same mistake. He, he was very, very lucky for the second time. It's a lucky boy to um, two tackles, not ten minutes in. It's a bit of a hectic moment for him there. I think he just needs to slow back down, to be honest. In one word, does he reappear for the second half? I should think, no, it's risky. OK, nil-nil. Much to talk about. The last...
هدف بوليستيتش وتصدى جيرو يمنح ميلان أصد الصدارة خطف ميلان فوزا صعبا على أرض مضيفي جنوى واحد صفر يوم السد ضمن منافسات الجولة الثامنة من الدور الإيطالي لكرة القدم وسجل كريستيانو بوليستيتش هدف المباراة الوحيد لميلان في الدقيقة السابعة والثمانين وشهدت المباراة تعرض مايك مانيان حارس مرمى ميلان للطرد في الدقيقة الثامنة من الوقت المحتسب بدلا من الضائع للشوط الثاني ليكمل المباراة الفرنسي أولي في جيرو في حراسة المرمى بدلا من ميلان وبهذا الفوز رفع ميلان رصيده إلى 21 نقطة ليخطف صدارة الترتيب مستغلا تعطر غريمي التقليدي انتر ميلان وتعادل اثنين لاثنين في وقت سابق من يوم السبت مع ضيف بولونيا ليبتعد عنه بفارق نقطتين على الجانب الآخر تجمد رصيد جنوى عند ثمان نقاط في المركز الخامس عشر كما خطف ميلان فوزا صعبا على أرض مضيف جنوى واحد صفر يوم السبت من منافسات الجولة الثامنة من الدوري الإيطالي لكرة القدم وسجل كريستيان بوليستيتش هدف المباراة الوحيد لميلان في الدقيقة السابعة والثمانية وشهدت مباراة تعرض مايك مانيان حارس مرمى ميلان للطرد في الدقيقة الثامنة من الوقت المحتسب بدلا من الضائع للشوط الثاني ليكمل المباراة الفرنسي أوليفي جيرو في حراسة المرمى